let me tell you a little bit of a history about what I'm going to say today. I started thinking about what I'm going to do and what I'm going to say about three months ago. And I'll get back to that for a minute, in a minute. I want you to know I've been honored to be asked to speak at a number of places, educational institutions, uh, medical facilities. You have my word. Today, this is one of the greatest honors of my life. And let, me, let me tell you why. I'm sure a lot of you kids, pardon me if I call you a kid, you can call me a kid. By the way, if you ever get to see me in person, please call me Ken. I relate better to that than Mr. But I can imagine some of you kids have seen hell in years when you should be thinking of nothing but joy and comfort. All I can tell you is build on your experiences, the bad ones as well as the good ones. And when you get through it, and you will get through it, look how far you are right now. You're ready to go out with a job, a good paying job. More important than the job, a future. Make it all it can be. Anyway, let me go back to this speech. So I spent a couple of months in Florida writing this down, writing that down, redoing this, redoing that. And last weekend, I don't know what it was like in Philadelphia, but in New York, it rained for three days in a row. My eyes were hurting from reading so many books over the last year. I was tired of watching too many movies that I th thought I'd wasted my time with, and I thought I'd practice my speech. Saturday afternoon, I said, this is nuts. These kids don't want to hear about this. What I had done, I was asked to give the commencement speech at Bucknell University 19 years ago. What I had done, and I was going to acknowledge that it was my speech so nobody could accuse me of plagiarism like some people do routinely. <laughs> and I got done and I said, I'm not doing this. And Lane said to me, you're giving your speech on Friday. I said, I got to figure it out. I said, I'm going to sit for a whole day and reflect on all the people that I've been blessed to know in my life that impacted me some of them will have all of these traits. All of them will have at least one of these traits. And prayfully, prayfully in my life, I've reflected on what I've learned from them. Now, I will concede to you one thing, and don't forget this. We all stumble and fall. Our Lord fell three times on his way to his crucifixion. To me, there's a message in that. The message is, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and carry on. That you've got to do. Giving up is no option. Surrendering, quitting is not an option. As bad as it might be, there's always something good you can attach yourself to. Grab onto it and go with it. Interestingly enough, today is June 4th. 64 years ago, yesterday, June 3rd, I started my career as a clerk at the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States for $82.50 a week. And the rest is history. How did it happen? A, I was born to two of the most wonderful human beings in life. No education. Mother went to the seventh grade. Dad went to the eighth grade. He was a plumber. He was a very proud plumber. Mom ended up having to go to work in the school cafeteria to make ends meet. One of the burden my dad had, he was manic depressive. And I can remember the times when he was manic, it was great. But when he was depressed, it was not nice. I can guarantee you, I am more empathetic. I am more conscious. I am more sensitive because of what I grew up with. And you will be, too. The challenge for you is to take whatever adverse experience you've had and make sure it's reflected in helping that person 
that needs a hand, that needs a hug, that needs a kiss. I know today it's, it's risky to hug and kiss people. I still do it, and I suspect one day I'm going to get sued for sexual harassment or something else, but what the <laughs> hell. At 85, I'm not worried too much. They'll get me and have fun with me, and we'll move on. But seriously, take your own bad experience and turn it into something good. Your kindness, your helping, your caring, your giving. And believe me, you help one life. You help the world. So I'm invited here today, and I thought I'd give you a bit of a bird's eye view of what my day is like. And you decide what you want. We founded the Home Depot in 1978, and I believe what I'm about to say is more than coincidental. A very dear friend of mine was Frank Borman, the astronaut, who went around the moon Christmas Eve, 1968. And when Frank, he, Ross Perot introduced me to Frank, when Frank came to see me in New York, he, by the way, one of the most humble, decent, kind, giving men you could ever know in your life, and I'll tell you about him and his life right now. I said to him, Frank, weren't you a little worried that the retro rockets might not fire and instead of going home to the Earth, you're going to go out in space and never to be seen again? He said, I had no problem at all. He said, I had my prayers with me. I said, could I have a copy of those prayers? And he said, yes. I've said those prayers every morning, so I'll tell you how my day starts. I get up, I brush my teeth, I go get the coffee in the kitchen, bring it to my wife. It keeps a marriage going, and trust me, it's a lot cheaper than a divorce, okay? <laughs> and then I go and sit down, and I say a rosary every morning. There's a book, there's a Bible study guide called The Upper Room. I've gotten it for 40 years. Every morning there's a reading in the Bible. And I refer to them. I read, do the reading, and then I read the little message that comes with it. And then I say Frank's prayers. And then I, there's six different psalms that have expressions in them and meanings in them, humility, and I'll talk about all this in a minute. And I know one thing. I am going to have bad days. I've had bad days, and I will continue to have bad days, and so will you. But I know that my faith and my spirituality gives me strength I wouldn't have without my faith, strength, my faith and spirituality. Then I go to the gym. I admit I don't do as much as I used to because at 85, you know, you're not expected to do as much as you used to. And then I get dressed, and I go to work. And pardon me, Reverend, excuse me, but if you read my book, you'll know that I have a habit of using bad words every once in a while. <laughs> then I get up, and I go out, and I swear to God, I'm going to give the world one more kick in the ass again today. And I try. Now, that's my life. I have no doubt that from where I started collecting cardboard at 11 years old and digging ditches on the Long Island Expressway at 18, I wouldn't be here today, you wouldn't want me here today, except for the fact that our Lord has seen me through some pretty tough times. And you will have tough times. And when you have your faith to fall back on, trust me, it will see you through those tough times. So back to my speech, I said, okay, let me start thinking about people that matter to me and people that I've learned from. The fellow that Tim and I both know very well by the name of Frank Blake. Frank Blake took over the Home Depot at a very challenging time, and Home Depot was not always what it is today. At the time Frank took over, we were going through some really tough times. Now, let me tell you about Frank. I swear that when Frank Blake gets dressed in the morning, there's no lights on in his be bedroom or in his closet. Because I've never seen Frank dressed yet 
with a closed match. Am I right? He looks like my father did. My father was a plumber, and Frank could have been a plumber, too. And one more thought. Hopefully, you're all going to have families. The one thing my mother and father gave me, the one thing that mattered the most, was unconditional love. I was a mischievous kid. I could get into more fixes than you could imagine. And after they were done being angry and disappointed with me, I knew, I knew, I knew I had their unconditional love. And boy, that gave me a motive. That gave me a, a well of, of strength because I knew they were there. If you give your child nothing more than that, you've given them everything, absolutely everything. OK. So Frank Blake, back to Frank, the most humble man I've ever met. Now, let me tell you about Frank's credentials. Graduate of Harvard, graduate of Columbia Law School, clerk, there's only nine of them in a year, clerk to Justice Stevens of the Supreme Court of the United States, head of strategy at General Electric, number two guy in the Department of Energy, head of strategy at Home Depot, didn't know a hammer from a saw, but had the greatest well of humility I've ever met with anybody in my life. And that made him a natural leader. Remember this, humility will never get you in trouble, ever. Humility is the willingness to understand somebody may do something better than you, but that doesn't make you any less of a person. You are strong when you're humble. When somebody does something better than you do and you aspire to do what they're doing, do everything you can to copy what they're doing. If you aren't humble, you'll never concede to yourself There's somebody who knows something better than me or does something better than me, and I'm going to do it like they do it. That's the key. The best ideas I've ever had in my life, I've stolen from somebody else. Very best. I acknowledge where they came from, and that brings me to honesty. Honesty comes in one size, only one size. You are either honest or you're not honest. There is nothing in between. And don't forget that. And that brings me to another point. The people I've seen in my life who live their values, Tim Crow, all you trustees here, all the faculty, which, by the way, to all of you, I thank you for having me here today. I can't tell you what an honor it is to me. Parents, relatives, friends. Your values are the only thing that will distinguish you from anybody else. Preferably, they're good values. And what are they? Never compromise, compromise on your basic values, which should be honesty, concern for others, sincerity, and most important, most important, helping other people live better lives. You'll never know how, the biggest feeling I have of my success, whatever it is, is when I know I've helped somebody else. To make one life better, only one life, changes the world. To know that you have had an impact on somebody else in a positive way. A friend who may be going through a crisis. A friend who's on drugs. A friend who's got alcohol. Whatever, the, going through a divorce. All these things happen. This is part of the nature of humanity. But your values should be to ask the question, how can I help? And then there's reputation. Remember this about reputation. 
and I'm stealing this from Warren Buffett. It takes a lifetime to build a reputation, and you can lose it in five minutes. So ask yourself the question every time there's a challenging moment in your life, and there will be many of them. Ask yourself the question, am I doing the right thing? My father, with an eighth grade education, was one of the wisest men I've ever known. He gave me what I call the newspaper test. One time I was thinking of doing something, which was not, I was never very often in deep thought, but this is one of those times I was in deep thought. He said, what are you thinking about? And I thought, I got something I'm thinking about. He said, well, let me just leave you with one thought. Ask yourself the question, if what you're going to do tomorrow today is on the front page of the newspaper tomorrow, would you be okay with that? If it's no, guess what? Forget it, get over with it, move on, don't do it. It's a test that never fails. And that's, you have a clean slate. Today you're leaving here with a sheet of paper clean and spotless. It's up to you to make sure it stays that way. And trust me, if you do, if you do, good things will happen to you. Your word. Your word is the most precious thing you'll ever have. When you put your hand out and you say agreed, or you make a contract with somebody, remember that contract is based on your word. And when you compromise your word, nothing's left. These are things I see in people. When God made you this, this morning I checked the world population. It's 6.7 billion people as of this morning on Google. There isn't another person of those 7.7 .7 billion people, there is not another person exactly like you. When our Creator created you, He made you special and unique. Don't forget that. When you look at yourself in the mirror, remember, you're precious. You matter. You can make a difference. You carry the burden of friendships. My reputation, if I heard it, impairs the reputation of people who call me their friend. So your burden is not just your own reputation. It's the reputation of your friends. Believe in everything you do or don't do it. If you can't show passion, if you can't show a sense of total commitment, don't do it. Remember, what you do, what you do, will be how people will measure you in the years going forward. You leave here today spotless. Keep it that way. And regarding self-respect, don't expect anybody to respect you if you don't respect yourself. You're special. You're unique. You're precious. As bad as times might be, or as bad as something you might do, there's always a better tomorrow. And you should be and can be part of that tomorrow. Back to humility. When you're winning, act like you're losing. Everybody loves winners. The thing I loved about Frank Blake was he was having one great year after another in leadership at Home Depot, and every year you swore to God, this year is going to be worse than last year. That's humility. Humility relaxes everybody around you. They're not frightened by you. And, and bear in mind, you kids are leaving here with great, great skills. Don't stop there. If you're going to be an electrician, dream that one day you're going to have your own electrical company, and you're going to have a lot of people working for you. And when that happens, you're going to take care of them. You're going to respect them. You're going to do what we do at Home Depot. 
Make sure that your people, that, and nobody works for you, everybody works with you. Make sure that the people who work with you understand that they are the key to your success. I'm here today because I'm branded the co-founder of Home Depot. These lovely ladies over here that have enormous responsibilities at Home Depot run any number of stores up here in the Northeast. Tim Crow is the head of all of our associates, not employees, associates, 500,000 of them. Every one of those associates are what makes Home Depot Home Depot. Not me, not Bernie, not Arthur, not Pat. It's those kids that put the apron on every morning who dine to make sure that when you go to our store, you're going to feel wanted, you're going to get the help you need, you're going to feel like you were fairly treated, and you're going to like going there. Remember that, too. If you're going to be a salesman, rule number one, make sure people like you because people like to buy things from people they like. That's a very simple rule, and it works. Don't forget that. You're going to fail from time to time. Use your failure as a foundation to grow on, to learn from, to understand. I had a friend of mine one time. I'd made a major business error. and. Uh, came into my office and he said, you look like you lost your last friend. I said, no, but I think I might have lost my last dollar. He said, what do you mean? I said, I just made a hell of a blunder. And about five minutes later, he came back in my office. I thought he was going to help me out of this funk I was in. And he said to me, you know, he said, I don't think I've ever made a mistake like that. And I quickly looked and I said, you know, you're right. You haven't done a damn thing in your life. How the hell can you make a mistake? <laughs> the only people who don't make mistakes are people who don't do anything. Make sure you grow from your mistakes, but pray to God you don't, your mistake is not violating your values or your standards or your ethics or your respect for your fellow human being. When you promise you go on a job, you're a plumber, you're an electrician, you're a Whatever it is, if the boss expects you to hook up six basins today in a hospital, you're building a new hospital, make it seven, make it eight, make it nine. Promise less and deliver more. You will win. When people understand you're giving it all you've got and effort, and you're not going to compromise on your values, and you're going to do everything the best you can, and they can count on that, Watch the wonderful things that happen in your life. I know this, that the three most powerful things in my life that I've learned, a kind word, a thoughtful gesture, a hug, your arm around a person who's just had a real problem, I'm with you, it's going to be okay. We'll get through this together. And finally, enthusiasm for whatever you're doing. The one thing, when I got offered this job at the Equitable Life, when the man hired me, they were only hiring students with graduate degrees. He said, you know why I'm hiring you? I said, I have no idea. 82.50 a week. He wasn't exactly walking around with an enlarged heart. <laughs> he said, I'm hiring you because I see passion and enthusiasm. I said, I won't let you down. You have no idea how people will attach to you when they see your passion and your commitment to what you stand for and what you do. If you're successful as I am and have been, give back. The greatest joy I have in my life is not what I've made, but what I see I can do with the good fortune the good Lord has bestowed on me. The morning that we announced that we were giving free tuition to every medical school student at NYU, that means there's 400 of them come tuition free every year, a total of over four years, 100 a year. 
There was a silence. If you, it was on 60 Minutes, if you didn't see it. There was a silence, and then it struck them, that what they just heard. And they got up, and they went nuts. And I turned to my wife, and I said, Elaine, I think we're rich. I never felt my wealth before that moment. And the appreciation of that wealth didn't come through me. It came through knowing that these kids, these kids were going to be helped, and it mattered to them, and it mattered to humanity. There's two more things. Dream. Dream big. How many of you are starting out as carpenters or plumbers or electricians? Raise your hands. I want you to promise me. You're starting there, but one day on the New York Stock Exchange, there's going to be a company with your name on it, and you're going to have 5,000 plumbers and 6,000 electricians. You're going to be one of the biggest plumbing or electrical contractors in the world, and you started it. And just think of all the lives you can impact when you can do that. And when you do do that, and my last thought, dream big. Dreams don't cost anything. And they come in all sizes. Dream, dream, dream big. And never stop dreaming. I still dream every day. I still thank God that I've got the capacity and the wherewithal, intellectually, you know, get a little flaky at my age, but so far, so good. I, I still dream. I dream good things. And I thank God for these people here from Home Depot. And, because guess what? It's they're who you're acknowledging today, not me. They did it. We had the idea, but they did it. 500,000 people all over America. Love your work. Hold on to your values. Care for others. Give back. Thank you for having me, and God bless all of you.